Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So we're doing another Soul Spotlight today. This is Victoria, but I'm gonna let her tell you her whole story, but pretty much Victoria was pretty instrumental to my Soul Cycle journey. If you watched that video, I'll link that below when I was talking about when I was getting into Soul Cycle and just like her support and her class is phenomenal. Obviously a teacher down here in DC, but she has a really cool story too. Like just like her background with Soul, she's been with Soul Cycle for a really long time. She's a senior instructor down here, but I'm gonna let her tell you all about that. And we're just gonna get into it. Let's get into it. Okay, sure. cool. Um, really quickly though, so I said that she's a senior instructor, yep. and some people asked, and I figured you would be a good person to answer this. What's the difference between a senior instructor and a master instructor and all that? Like, I think some people don't understand what that means. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna do my best here on yeah. trying to explain that. Um, I think really there's a lot of gray area. There is, there is. In, yeah. in what differentiates uh, an instructor from a senior level instructor and a master level instructor. Um, I guess I would say if I had to break it down. The easiest. Yeah. So <laughs> firstly, it's how much time you put in with the company, yeah. right? So it's a certain amount of time that you put in with the company. It has a lot to do with how full your classes might be. But I think that the biggest deciding factor between the different levels is the kind of community that you build mm -hmm. within your room and then also how you support the brand being SoulCycle, which is our platform. Yeah. And we get the choice to do you right. know whatever we want with that. Um, I think it's how you support the brand within the studio and then also how you support the brand and build mm -hmm. your community right. outside of the studio. Yeah. Definitely success over time is a huge factor in it, but there's a lot of other things. Like she said, it's a super gray area. Right. So and of course also I think it matters like what if you're willing to make what's the word I'm looking for? If you're willing to take risks in yeah. the room, right? Mm -hmm. So people that will try new choreography, try new things, um, and there's a level of trust built within mm -hmm. your community when yeah. you try new things. Yeah. Um, so I think that has a lot to do with it. Well. Yeah, it does. It's um, so there's like that in a nutshell. I mean, I think a lot of people are always curious when they see people get senior or master, and they're like, "What on earth does that mean?" Yeah. Um, yeah. It's basically kind of like a promotion for us in Soul Cycle, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So let's just get into the nitty gritty. So how did you find Soul Cycle? Oh my gosh, way, how way back. This video? Yeah. How much time do we have? Um, okay, so I feel like a lot of people may have already heard this story from me or not, but I'll try and keep it as short as I can. Um, how did I find SoulCycle? So Kim Perfetto is one of the OG instructors at SoulCycle. She's a senior master instructor who started out in New York City. Mm -hmm. So at the time, she was flown out to LA to instruct and open up the first ever West Hollywood studio, which was the first studio outside of New York City. Mm -hmm. Actually, it was studio number nine, I just found out. Really? And we have 91 studios now. I didn't know that. Yep. Okay. So she calls me one day, and at the time I had just moved to LA, and she was like, hey, do you want a job at the front desk? Mm -hmm. And she was a good, I, I forgot this part, she was a good friend of mine yeah. because her <laughs> brother married my best friend. Okay. So we were bridesmaids together in their okay. wedding, if any of this makes any no, sense does, at all. Does. I mean, um, I knew she is. Like, right. right, so oh, that's yeah. how we got, uh, that's how we became friends. So she calls me up and she's like, hey, uh, SoulCycle's hiring, do you want to work on the front desk? Mm -hmm. And in my mind, I'm like, no. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even really know what SoulCycle is. Because you were out there for? To become a TV host. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. I wanted to be on E! News more than I wanted to breathe the air, like air, yeah. honestly. Yeah. I always say that I used to think about being on E! News mm -hmm. before I rushed my TV show. Yeah. That's how badly I wanted to do that. Wow. Um, she calls me up and was like, do you want a job uh, working at the front desk? And mm -hmm. I was like, not really, but okay. Mm -hmm. So I remember yeah. going to the interview and I was like, why am I here? I don't even want this job. Yeah. And I interview. And then I remember I get the job and I show up on the front desk and the first day I put on my yellow shirt, um, the iconic yellow shirt. Yeah. And I was like, why am I here? I don't really want to work yeah. here. Yeah. And so I start working there, end up loving it. The mm -hmm. best, greatest community. The people who work on the front desk became like all of my friends. Right. Mm -hmm. um, which was super awesome, living so far away from home on the West Coast when I'm originally from the East Coast. Right. I remember I was auditioning to become you know, a host in different projects and I decided to be an instructor or try to be an instructor right. um, while I was working on that. So it was, for me, it was just gonna be like a side gig. Right, correct. And yeah. then once I did it, it felt like mm -hmm. nothing in my life ever felt more right. And what was like the time between, so how long had you been working front desk before you decided you wanted to become an instructor? I think like two years, maybe right. two and a half. It was and like what made you want to become an instructor? So they were doing, they were piloting the first ever Los Angeles training group. Right. So before that, it had always been in New York City. Mm -hmm. Which it still basically is. It they really did is, one yeah. LA one like yeah, last done. year. Yeah. But they I don't think 
they like didn't really get hand out. But yeah, you gotta be close to the mothership, which is in New York City. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it was a shortened three week program, and I was like, three weeks, and I get to stay in LA, I don't have to go right. away in New York City. And why I was not? like, perfect, mm -hmm. why not? I'll just try it. Mm -hmm. So here we are, uh, yeah. however many years later. You got into that three week training group, mm -hmm. and then do you wanna walk us through like what kind of transpired after that? Sure. Okay. Yeah. You want to tell them tell them no. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't want to, we don't. Have oh my to. God! No, I'm okay. totally down. Well, I'm just saying because it's like part of her story, which I was actually saying to the staff. Yesterday I love to talk about at Bethesda. I was like, I don't think everyone knows this about Victoria's. Oh my God! Know, I love to talk about it. Okay. Yeah. So, so I yours? go to. Uh, sorry, so mad. Um, I go to the three week training, mm -hmm. and I do my best, and it just, you know, it's not that I failed because I didn't. But, you know, they called me up and they were just like, when the training was completed and they were like, we can get you on the schedule, we'll give you about two or three classes a week, um, or you can come back to New York and retrain because we just don't know that you're ready to take on a full schedule. And at the time, like right. knife to the heart, right. I was crushed. I was crushed. I can't imagine. I was like, oh my God. And for me, I knew immediately what my choice was going to be. Mm -hmm. I knew immediately what my choice was going to be. But I said to them, I was like, okay, uh, I need a few days to think about it. And I had my boyfriend at the time, so I, I wanted to speak with him about it. And I was like, hey, mm -hmm. this is what they said. I mean, I'd probably call them once I finished crying. Right. Um, it's heartbreaking. Yeah, because yeah. You, when you finish and you work so hard on something, you want the people that are your superiors to be like pumped about you. Yeah. You want them to be jazzed and be like, we can't wait to get you on the schedule. Mm -hmm. We can't wait to get you out there. You yeah. know? And it's just like, Overall, I could tell and that was not their so feeling. much hard work goes into training. A lot of people ask questions about how intense is training and all that, and like we're not going to really get into that, but like it's a lot, and I yeah. can't imagine my eight-week training being pushed into three. Yeah. Like how how draining that would probably you evolve you. so much as yeah. a person mm -hmm. too in that time. So not only are you learning you're, the yeah. fundamentals of like what goes on in the room, but like you're evolving so much as a person. Yeah. And I know that you did that for sure. Yeah. Like in your time you spent, it's yeah. crazy. Um, so I was crushed and I remember talking to my boyfriend and I was like, so this is what happened. And I remember I was like, so I think I want to go to New York. Mm -hmm. And I thought he was going to be like, no, what you're going to leave me for two months. Yeah. And he was like, I think you should do that too. Yeah. And I was like, great. Yeah. So all signs towards yes. Yeah. Good. So I called them up and I was like, Hey, I actually kind of messed with them a little bit. I was yeah. like, Hey, I was like, I think I could get on the schedule and I could crush it. And like those two or three classes a week, I was like, I know I could like crush them and like make you guys really proud. I was like, but I'm going to come yeah. to New York. Yeah. And I remember I get like butterflies thinking about it. Cause I remember they were like, wait, what? Yeah. Oh my God. Like, are yeah. you kidding? Yeah. And I think I was the first person to do that. To repeat? To repeat training. But if you pay attention to now, there's been a couple other people. Oh yeah. So Daniela, Repeated training. Oh, really? I didn't um, know that. And James up in Boston. James L. Uh -huh. Some of the people that are like the greatest instructors on the schedule. I mean, these people like um, Daniela kills it mm -hmm. in Canada. Mm -hmm. James kills it in Boston. Yes. Um, and sometimes you just need to go through something twice mm -hmm. to like really have it sink in. Yeah. No. And uh -huh. Jara. Yeah, Jara did too. Who's no longer an instructor, but if you watch this, huge you probably know who Jara is. So. Yeah, Jeremy, whatever. What's yeah. up, Jara? Yeah, so after that you went and then obviously you became an instructor. Mm -hmm. uh, people want to know this. Is, what were your audition songs? Do you remember? The songs you auditioned? I have no you idea. have no idea? I have no idea. I mean, I'm wondering it was when so last minute for me. That is true. I jumped in at the last minute and I was like, I think I'm going to try this. It was so different then. Yeah, I so I wish I had the answer to that because I feel like people are so nostalgic about mm -hmm. what they auditioned yeah. to and I truly, truly, truly yeah. don't Well, I auditioned three times, so trying to remember all three times, I'm like, yeah. Yeah, but I'll just remember the ones when I got in. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's just like move on past that. So that's like her whole thing. So, But you've worked for Soul, Soul Cycle for like seven years? It'll be seven years ahead of this month. Yeah, yeah, so that was, what year was that when you started? 20... 2012? It was when I began, yeah. yeah. So she's been around. <laughs> okay, um, and you've been an instructor for how long? Four and some months. Okay, got it. Okay, so moving on to the instructor part. Moving on. Um, so, what's one of your favorite parts of class? I know it changes, but like, if you could pick something that you like always, I don't know. My favorite you. part of class, let's see. I mean, my favorite thing that happens in, the, happens in the room is when, I always say this, I feel like I've told you this before, but I guess not to everybody else. <laughs> my favorite thing that happens by far and away is 
when you're on that podium and you're looking out to 60 people and maybe it's someone in the second row or third row mm -hmm. and they're kind of just like sprinkled in and they don't think that I see them mm -hmm. and they're just like going for it, mm -hmm. really going for it. Mm -hmm. So it's a push or something, you know, really difficult. And there's like this moment where it almost as if like a light switch is turned on yeah. in someone and it's like you can tell almost it's like I can hear what they're thinking. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh shit, I can do this. Right. And it's that moment when they realize that they're so much stronger than they might have given themselves credit mm -hmm. for and that they like really can push right. through something like difficult. Mm -hmm. um, that's a favorite thing. Yeah, I love that. I love it. And when someone's like so locked in. And somebody also asked, they're like, do you guys prefer like people who ride in the front to people who ride in the back? And it's like, it's like no, because yeah, I think they yeah. think that we only watch the people who are in the front. Yeah. And I'm like, n it's just so funny. You're like, no, I see the people who are like yeah. killing it, like for the those people are like, you know, the probably the most inspiring, I would mm -hmm. say, you know, or you know that magic moment when you build a relationship with someone and they're always on bike 46, and bike 46 yeah. is a jam, and they're always on bike 46, right. and then one day you walk into the room and they're in the front row, and you're yeah. like, yeah. are we doing this? Are we doing yeah. this? We're doing this, and it's like, you know, like when you see someone yeah. like graduate and like move up like that like yes there's no difference between we love everybody like you know wherever they yeah. sit but when you see someone who like takes a big leap and you know it's a big deal yeah. for them then yeah. that's kind of that's huge. really cool for sure okay so what's a song you can play over and over in class just like the first country time summer country summer 100 percent um everybody I'm knows like, that's like my number one go-to jam like Nelly no, and that's so Wolf, funny like, because i know that Indian summer you love, yeah. but it's a it's a mashup of that and country grammar. Oh yeah, really. it's it's okay. good. Okay, that's a good one. Um, who's one artist that people are definitely going to hear in your class? One artist people are definitely going to hear in my class. Um, I play a lot of Drake for sure. Um, I don't know, probably Drake. Yeah, I'm like trying to think who I would say you would play. But then I feel I like you like play a lot of poppy, like yeah, you definitely play. But pop. it's like a genre of everybody. That's like a mix. Like you're, Drake you're, would be a consistent. Is that where? Eclectic or something when you play, play everything. Yeah, I play everything. Yeah, sure. But Everyone I, says that, but like it's kind of true. Like, yeah. you do this how many times a day? Like, how many times a week? Yeah. Like, you gotta switch it up. Um, what's your favorite move on the bike? Favorite move right now? Um, I'm doing. What am I doing right now? I mean, a couple different things. So I'm doing that right, left, tap back push, and that's like oh, that's fun. something I like right now. That's fun. Pull it into a double. Yeah, right, double fun. right. Double. Okay, so three words to describe your class. This is a fun one. Oh gosh. Okay, three words to describe my class would be energizing, motivational, uh, what is, kick ass. Yeah, sure. those, those are good, those are good. Um, I love hearing what people say to that because they're <laughs> always different. This is just a side note, like how do you recover? Like what do you do like on your off days or how do you like check out of Soul Cycle? Because it's obviously a very emotional and physical job yeah. that I don't think people realize that sometimes. I mean, I always have people in the bathroom be like, oh, how do you teach as many classes in a day? But I'm like, right. the emotional side is oh my, like almost the same. It's if not warm, right? Yeah. Um, our yes. bodies were trained to do this at this point, you know what I mean? Yeah, but but there isn't so much information. We, we know how to train our bodies. We know how to take BCAs. We know how to do all those mm -hmm. things like bring your body back. But the emotional yeah, how do you drainage that recovers? Goes, I hate yeah. the word drainage because it's it lifts you up at the same time. It does. It's just um, I try to explain it as like a, an energy. Right. But it's like thing. you have that many people in the room who throw all their energy on you, and like you have to take it. So like it is draining in a way, but it's just like you have to hold on to that, and somehow you gotta let it go. Yeah. You I know? think for me, I'm in my car a lot. Yes. And I Same. think yeah, it's a couple of different things. A lot of times, I really love to drive around with no music yeah, on. I yeah. Just in silence. I either do podcasts or nothing. Yes. <laughs> um, I do books on tape. Is the other thing I yeah. do. Um, and that kind of jump starts maybe a lot of times like the message that I might give for the mm -hmm. day when I'm super inspired by mm -hmm. something that someone else has to say. Mm -hmm. um, so that helps me build up when I get ready for a class. And then a lot of times just driving around in silence is so great. I know, it is so true. I tell people that and they think I'm insane. Yeah. And I'm like, no, I, I can't. I mean, music is forever changed for us. I think because like if, when I'm at a bar, if I'm like not there, like what's the beat of this? What would I be doing? I'm like, I don't like it. Totally. It's so, is that normal? Yeah. Oh, no, I'm insane. I'm like, you yeah. can't ride to this, I don't care. It's don't so care. funny. Yeah. Um, Toss it. That kind of goes with another question I wanted to ask because people asked about this and I haven't asked anyone else and I think 
she's the perfect person to start with this question because if you've ever taken Victoria's class, you know that she's very good at motivational speaking. You are, you're like, and I always tell people that when they ask about like, oh, what's this person's class like? I'm like, she is so good at, like, you're just good at making people feel. Oh, and and like feeling like you're like, how did, like kind of like you said, you're like, I know what they're thinking. It's like, how does she know that? Um, <laughs> people wanna know where do we get or where do you get your inspirational talks? Like how do we come up with that stuff? And you kind of just said like, if you hear something, but like, yeah, where do you pull from? Or I mean, do, do you want a story? I can give you a story. You can, do, do you have a story? I have a story. Do? I do, I, have, I sure. have a story of why I feel like I am this way. There's so many different things that go into it. I remember when I first started teaching, my whole computer keyboard used to be, every time I taught, would be covered in yellow most of notes. Really? Yeah. Covered. So I would, I mean, I'm always writing notes in my phone, like mm -hmm. constantly, mm -hmm. um, when I think of things that inspire me. Um, but anyways, I would write, I would write things on this, on these post-it notes all day long, every day. Like I would just like carry it around with mm -hmm. me, and then I would throw them on my keyboard, and then I would kind of pick one up randomly mm -hmm. in class, and that would be kind of like I would just go on a tangent about that thing That's or good whatever idea. it was. Yeah, and that used to work for me, um, and then I stopped doing that completely, and it just really, I guess, in the first song, it takes me a while for, before I put my shoes on. I think mm -hmm. I just kind of walk around the room, and I really try and feel like the pulse of the room mm -hmm. and the heartbeat of the room and try and dial in to like, you know, what people might need to in that day, in that mm -hmm. moment. Mm -hmm. um, and that really helps me a lot. Um, I always say, you know, for me, this is the story part, right? So mm -hmm. when I was in third grade, we lost my aunt. She was 19 in a plane crash. Mm -hmm. And it was really devastating for my family. And my grandmother, who was already like my best friend, and she still is. Yeah, um, she's so cute. She's adorable. My Chick-fil-A grandma. I was gonna say, everybody knows. Chick-fil-A together, I'm like goals. Okay. Yes. So she, not to get so intense on this, but no. you know, you should. Shamel got like so deep. So. Okay. You should Go never away. have to bury your child. Ever. Yeah. No. Um, and so my grandmother had a really hard time, um, and I remember that she really took me along with her on her healing process. Mm -hmm. So I was in third grade and I slept over her house all the time anyways, but you know, now staying over grandma's house was not just your excuse to, you know, whatever kids do, play video games and eat sugary cereal, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. It was before bedtime reading Oprah and mm -hmm. Dr. Phil yeah. and all of these books that she was healing, using to heal herself, um, she would read to me as well. I have like a, she wrote like a nice note for me mm -hmm. in one of the, the first book that we read uh, cover to cover together, which was The Power of Positive Thinking for Young People. Mm. And I'm in third grade. Yeah. So oh, I remember also during her healing process, we would drive down the street, and I remember she would say things all the time to me, like, "Do you ever just look out the window and, mm -hmm. you know, think how lucky you are, and that the, you know, the sky paints us a new picture with the clouds each, each day?" Mm -hmm. Like super corny stuff at the time, and I remember thinking, like, "Yeah, yeah, Grandma, uh -huh. okay," and feeling like it really was just going in one ear and out the other. But as I grew up and as I, you know, I've become an adult, I really think that a huge piece of who I am in that room is downloaded from the, the things that I was learning mm -hmm. when I was in the third grade. Mm -hmm. um, I learned a lot about gratitude at a really young age. Yeah. Um, and those kind of things just kind of stick with you and then they evolve over time. And so sharing that um, really helps. And I think just whenever we open ourselves mm -hmm. up, you know, because you have a story, mm -hmm. you know, everyone has a story yeah. and just sharing who you are and being vulnerable with that, I think really like anytime anyone can relate to you at all, because you know, when we get into the room, it's never supposed to be about us, yeah, right? Mm -hmm. And that's something that we, we know, we feel mm -hmm. that it's not meant to be about us, but at the same time, it might be taboo to say, but it, it actually is mm -hmm. in a huge way. Mm -hmm. Because if you can talk about something that you are going through and something you are feeling, I guarantee that at least half of the room has either, or, probably the entire room, mm -hmm. either has been there, done and gone through the same yeah, thing, and sure. gotten through it, mm -hmm. or someone is experiencing the same exact right. thing mm -hmm. that you are at the same time. So there's always this like sense of relatability. So like being unafraid, which takes time, right? Yeah. To just talk about what you're experiencing. Mm -hmm. like. Something silly, like someone stole your parking spot, yeah. and like it yeah. spiraled into this whole like thing where you got angry at this person and that person, and you treated people, whatever, you know, mm -hmm. like just shit we all go yeah. through. Um, but sharing that and mm -hmm. then saying like how you know you flipped it around, and I think that there's just a huge powerful piece in 
being open about your own personal mm -hmm. human yeah. life experience. So yeah. what's one thing your riders may not know about you? Oh gosh, one <laughs> thing my riders may not know I about me. I'm a nerd. Yeah. I am a nerd. If you follow me on Instagram, I feel like people think I am I don't know what people think about me. I can't pretend to know, but I feel they like they think might think I'm the cool. Life. You know what I mean? Because you like travel. And, like, you travel a lot. Yeah, you definitely do a lot of cool. But I'm a homebody. Yeah. I love to so be home. home. We're very similar. similar. Yeah, I love to wear pajamas. Similar. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. If I had a boyfriend like you, I'd never come. I would never do anything. <laughs> I, I need like I, yeah, hi. Please apply within. Looking for someone who wants to stay in with no me creeps, on please. Friday and Saturday nights. Oh my god, <laughs> we're gonna get the creepiest people. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, but what's one thing? You're just a nerd. You're a whole body. Yeah, yeah. nerd. People I think, think I'm. Yeah. Like I, I can also be super shy. I think because I, I know it. you, and I know that you like to go home, and I, we just are. We're very similar in that way. We both grew up in Maryland, like yeah. super tight with our family, and like love our dogs. <laughs> yeah, it's just like so funny. Yeah. And but then we both had these very big like ooh I hate to, ooh I don't even want to say this but like online personalities yeah. like barf. <laughs> Anyway. Instagram versus reality, that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That but like, not that, whatever. Anyways, moving on. Oh, so because SoulCycle is so competitive, I mean, a lot of people who want to become SoulCycle instructors, I think, follow us, reach out to us, all those things. They said, what made you stand out besides being yourself? Do you think oh, there's Yeah, I hate that because it's so true though, right? It Whenever is. Everyone asks us, like, what should I do? And I'm like, be yourself, be, you. be yourself. And that's like the worst thing you want to hear um, because it doesn't help you necessarily, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. um, stand out. Uh, this is the advice that I have given anyone I've ever helped, including you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I'll just say that um, to anyone who wants to become an instructor. Um, and yes, it does go and coincide with being yourself. It does. But 90% of the time, I mean, this, is how, this is how it was back in the day anyways. I'm not sure if it's changed, but mm -hmm. from what I've heard, a lot of times they know whether they're going to choose you before you even get on the bike. Mm -hmm. Do you remember me telling you this? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So before you even get on the bike, so they're asking, do they still do it this way? So they're asking you questions while you're getting mic'd up before you get on the bike, before you, um, before you get on and do your whole mm -hmm. thing, right? Mm -hmm. So like, where are you from? You know, just little questions. And based on how you carry yourself and how you speak, they've already decided whether they're going to choose your Presence is huge. Right. It's huge. You can it's... teach anybody how to ride a bike. Yeah. But you can't teach anyone how to hold space mm -hmm. in a room. So I think yeah, that's holding space, that's what I meant. Yeah. Yeah. So that's so can you sell a room? Yeah, it's pretty much when you go to into auditions, I think confidence is a huge thing and just like being able to carry yourself in right. a way that's like I deserve to be here all you know. And I, I love that. And I, I love that. That's a that's a great line. Oh, I deserve to be here. Yes. Like treating because yourself like you deserve to be here. If I'm thinking about my first two auditions, I was so nervous and the last time I was like, what do I have to lose? Because I already was told no and I was like and I was yeah. like, all right, let's do it. Yeah. And I think that helped me. Well, That's powerful. Oh. Treating yourself like you deserve yeah. either. What's one misconception you think people have about SoulCycle? People think it's so intimidating. Yeah. And I think from the moment, if you've never tried SoulCycle, it's like, it starts the moment you walk in the door, right? Yeah. So the mm -hmm. second you walk in the door, it's like the entire front desk staff is really like, so warm and welcoming and kind. I mean, sometimes it's a crazy check-in and there's like, you know, a sold out class, so it's kind of hard, but you know, everyone is nice to you. Yeah. Everyone is so nice. So I think yeah. a misconception is that it's like some giant cult where, you know, people are like, like a mean girls club and that's yeah. not true. It's not, it's not at all. Um, <laughs> if you were not a soul cycle instructor, what would you be doing? Probably still auditioning to be a TV host. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. And I would have eventually found some success, I think. I'm but sure, yeah. What I realized wholly is that I don't give a shit about what celebrities are doing with their lives. Mm -hmm. So if I was, you know, a host on E! News, like, I would be waking up every single day doing something I don't really care about. Yeah. And, like, <laughs> you help people now, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's so much better. Um, what inspires you most about this job? And that kind of coincides, I think, with, like, how do you stay motivated in a job like this? I would when I, what inspired me most about this job? Oh my God, there's so many things, but I think when I'm having an awful day, there's something, there's just like this magic that happens when you hit play on the playlist. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden it feels like you're one with mm -hmm. your whole room. And then that is the moment when you realize it isn't about you, right? And so, you know, you just kind of dig your heels into something. Um, and usually those are the classes that end up being the best mm -hmm. and I feel like I forget 
that like this job is so healing mm -hmm. and so I don't know if it's that way for you sometimes you go into a class and you're like you whatever happened before that you're having the worst day yeah. and you mm -hmm. leave yeah and you're like oh I feel so much better yeah no I totally agree with that 100%. so it's, it would be that it can turn anyone's day around including my own yes which is kind of weird no no <laughs> not at all I mean I think that's part of the reason that all of us get into that this yeah. job is because you want to help other people but we have to remember when we were riders, that's how we felt. If riders take away one thing from your class, what do you want it to be? We're nearing the end. <laughs> We're nearing the end. If riders took away one thing from my class, I would want it to be that they are stronger than they give themselves credit for. That's always my biggest thing is like, somehow, some way, within the course of that 45 minutes, something happens, mm -hmm. right? And when you leave those doors, people have the opportunity to feel a whole lot lighter than mm -hmm. when they walked in, yet so much stronger at yeah. the same time. Yeah, I talk about that a lot, yes, yeah. so true. So I think that, that would be the biggest takeaway, mm -hmm. um, to just dial in and yeah, hopefully they, they get that from, from, their, from being in that room. No, for sure. Name two people who have been super influential on your soul cycle journey. Pixie 100%. And why? Yes. Um, Pixie, yeah. Say. Oh gosh. She, so Pixie's an instructor in LA. Yes, Pixie's an instructor in LA. If you don't follow her, master instructor. yeah, master, senior master. Um, if you don't follow her, she's at Purposeful Pixie um, on Instagram. Yes. You should definitely follow her. Um, she's just super open, authentic, and raw, and played played such an instrumental part in literally getting me to where I am today. Um, her class is incredible. Um, if you take her class, she'll definitely uh, change your bike settings. That's her favorite thing to do. She loves to do that. Every time someone, I send somebody out from the East Coast and they're like, oh, I'm gonna be in, in LA, we should I take a bike pixie? And yeah. she's like, oh, she changed my bike settings. I'm like, yeah, she does that. Yeah, oh my God. Um, so yeah, but funny. she was on the training team when I was doing training and she was someone, like we just became good friends. Um, so definitely pixie and then instrumental part would be Angela for sure mm -hmm. um, you know both of them it was the first ever West Coast studio so at the time we had like five instructors and then it was the front desk staff mm -hmm. so typically there's a lot of soul cycles in a city per se and there's so many instructors now how many do we have in DC 20 some 25 20 30 I don't know something around there there's a lot there's a lot yeah so, <laughs> Imagine one front desk staff yeah. and imagine only like five instructors. So yeah. we were really close with those yeah. people. Um, and so Angela played a huge role just like watching her do what she does. I mean, mm -hmm. she is like, bow down. I mean, I never experienced her in person, but I've heard it's it's like, a whole other like church experience. on a bike, but like, yeah, out of this world. I actually, I don't know if you say this, hopefully you don't say this. I don't know. I personally like, I would never call my my class Sunday service. Like I have people say that a lot, and so, I just think it's like I don't yeah. love that. Like I would never refer to my own class as Sunday service. Like I just wouldn't do that. Um, no, I feel that. But I, I just. Didn't but like I feel like she's the only person who I would like reserve that for because yeah. it literally is like going to church. Yeah. She sometimes will talk about God yeah. in, the, mm -hmm. in the room mm -hmm. um, and she's just like spiritually really really just like a woman of faith and like I know her husband, I know her kids and like mm -hmm. everything she talks about she is. Yeah. She's the same person in the room as she is behind closed doors. Mm -hmm. So. Love that. Yeah. Woo. And Charlie. Oh, oh yeah, Charlie. Yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> you want to go talk about her? She's my friend. But she was instrumental as well. Like when I, re I remember I took her class when I was in training, mm -hmm. and I had met her before, but I didn't think she would remember who I was. Mm -hmm. And I was like, "Hi, I'm Victoria." She's like, I know who you are. And I was yeah. like, "Oh, okay." So she always um, we would like Facebook message back yeah. and forth, and she would like help me out with like things I was confused with during training, and like, yeah. we just always kept in touch. And then now we're good friends. But mm -hmm. she's uh, instrumental in being someone who inspires me because of her like growth within soul cycle and then her growth outside of soul cycle yeah it's for sure. powerful definitely let's wrap this up um we've gotten like really comfortable look at us we're just like laying down Lounging. um so finish the sentence i am fortunate for this job because i am fortunate for this job because i sometimes get to be the best part of someone's day yes that's so good and it's like Short and sweet and good. Let's just wrap it up there because we got a lot of good stuff today. So okay. um, I'm gonna tag everything from Victoria below, all her social, all that good stuff. But go follow her over there. It's a good time. Like we said, she has a really fun life, travels a lot. She like teaches in LA when she visits. She just like taught in New York a little, but she's down here. You teach at what studios? West End, Georgetown, and Bethesda. 
Okay, fabulous. And then, yeah, so catch her there. And I'm trying to think, is there anything else you want to add? Yeah, no, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, when I came out with all this, um, Victoria actually was in the hospital, so yeah, I could, I had, time. yes, very much so. So I had to put her on the back burner for the Soul Cycle Spotlight, and then we, we were just so busy. She's so busy yeah. that we, this is like our third time rescheduling, but that's fine. Yeah, we're here. Fine. We're, we're here. Yeah. So if you haven't already, please subscribe below. Would really appreciate subscribe. it. Subscribe. Yeah, you know, look, she knows what to do with that. And then, yeah, go over and follow Victoria. <laughs> like I said, I'll tag all that stuff below. I look so pale right now, but um, that's that. So thank that's you guys that. so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Okay, bye. bye. <laughs> I'm so pale. Ah! I'm trying to decide if I want my sweatshirt on or off. I'm like sweating. I might have to take mine off halfway through. Wait, hey guys. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> no, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Oops, that's my thing going off. Oh. <laughs> I thought my parking already was done. What the heck? Hold on. I got free parking. I was like, what? I got really lucky. Uh, I, don't I, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, that's it. Oh.